When I graduated from university and I'm basically looking at what field I want to enter into, a few scientists that I'd come across sprang to mind and a few areas attracted me. But one particular area was a, an area of immunology. That's the, uh, the way the body responds to infection. But for me, it was the way the body's immune response responds to cancer. And at the time, there were a, a few groups worldwide that had preeminence uh, in this area. And one of them happened to be in Nottingham in the UK. And it was run by a, a professor, uh, Professor Robert Baldwin. I remember listening to him deliver a lecture once and, and being very inspired by what he had to say. He showed some tremendous results demonstrating that the body could actually fight cancer and could protect against cancer and could actually be used as a form of therapy. Why have I chosen Robert Baldwin? Well, he actually was the first person ever to publish in this area. Um, he published two seminal papers in 1955 and I came to Nottingham to work with Robert um, in the 1970s uh, after I'd graduated with my doctorate and um, I became just inspired by the whole subject and, and, and the working environment and, and the man himself. Well, he started his work in Nottingham in a very small way. He was, uh, he was funded by local charities to work at the University of Nottingham and I think I'm right in saying it was probably him and one other person that started this, this whole line of work. And it's only really when his work became noted and uh, the Cancer Research Campaign decided this was a, an area that was well worth funding that his lab started to expand and it expanded from just a few people to half a dozen people to 20 people and eventually to more than 50 people working in, in, at the University of Nottingham in this area of science. Robert Baldwin led this laboratory in, 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 a, in a quite quiet way but also a very forceful way. He was very passionate about the areas he believed in um, and he, 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 he transferred that passion to his staff. And there's a couple of notable areas that he, he pioneered. The use of microorganisms to stimulate the body's immune response, the production of monoclonal antibodies against cancer, which in some cancers now are used as a therapy. He was leading us, but he was allowing us also to have our own way of, of working, our own way of thinking and developing our own ideas. I'd been at a conference where he delivered a keynote lecture. I, w I was almost uh, afraid to approach him because he was, he was a well-known figure of his time. Um, and I, I didn't actually approach him at the conference, but I wrote him a letter and uh, asked if uh, there was an opportunity to come and work in his lab after I'd completed my doctorate. He wrote back, he said, well, you, be you better come down and see me and uh, we'll talk about it. Um, so I did. And uh, um, as I was leaving, he, he asked me a very pertinent question. He says, is there anything else you want to ask me? And I, I basically said, well, uh, are you going to give me a job? And he said, yes, I think I will. So that's how I came to work uh, in Nottingham and spent five very happy years um, working under his direction and working with some very, very talented scientists. I think when you work with someone uh, that you admire and uh, you, you spend time with them, you realize that really they, they probably are quite ordinary people. Uh, uh, they're like you, they, they, they enjoy what they do, they have a passion for it and um, I would say that, uh, that he is uh, a very good friend and colleague of mine now. Um, although he's retired, um, he still has a very active mind and uh, we see him quite a lot. There are certain times that I remember being at conferences and um, virtually all the great men in science um, would know him. And uh, he, he could be standing in the middle of a very large conference and, and the really eminent scientists in this area and outside of this area would recognize him. It, it, it's it's uh, one of those experiences that you, you then realize how well known this person is and how much he's contributed, you know, to world science.
And I suppose all scientists have mannerisms. And um, I think uh, Robert Baldwin, uh, one of his mannerisms was that he used to put his hand in his pocket and jingle the change that was in his pocket. And uh, quite un unknowingly, I find myself doing that. And it, it, I'm not sure if this is something I've, I've, I've just picked up and inherited from the time that I worked with him. But um, every time I do it, I think to myself, well, um, yes, my boss used to do that as well. You probably grow out of that relationship of, of uh, you know, them being your boss and, and more so than being your, your colleague and um, a, a person that you can talk to and you can discuss matters with. Um, he'll always be the person that gave me my first uh, proper job and uh, I, I thank him sincerely for that. And also the time spent um, observing and working uh, in the laboratory and hopefully making uh, a small contribution to the way uh, things are today.